morning, family. Good morning. Welcome to the 30 Day Growth Challenge. This is day 17. Day 17. I'm Pastor Jerry. I'm Pastor Julia. We're the World Missions Director. And one thing we know, when we hit this halfway point, that's when everybody's like, oh, I'm ready to give up. I want to go home. It's not time to give up. No, don't give up now. You're growing in strength and endurance, and we're going to make it all the way to the end. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that as we open your word today, that you're going to give us revelation and understanding that we're going to be able to grow, Father, to be perfect in all of our ways. So, Lord, have your way today. Let your word come alive inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Say, yesterday we covered James 2, 25 through 26, where we learned that faith without works is dead. Today, we're going, going to be going through James 3, 1 through 5. Let's start. James 3, verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Well, we can see right away that he's talking to the whole church, brothers and sisters. But man, this warning that we're going to be judged strictly. What do you think of that, Julia? Yeah, there is so much here just in this first verse alone. And he is warning us. But in this warning, you can really hear James's heart of love and passion to protect and equip the church. So when we come up here and look at this, not many of you should become teachers in the church. So we all know what a teacher is, but he's talking in the biblical sense. So in that, let's define that. It's one who has defined authority or is able to impart truth yes. and wisdom of God's word. And then the second thing we don't need to get tripped up on is this word judged. So as we look at this, he's saying you're going to be held to a higher standard of accountability than the one that's learning. Or to simplify it, we could really just replace it with the word responsibility. Yes. So as a teacher in the church, you're accepting a responsibility before God to not only teach and protect the truth of God's word, but also to teach and protect God's children as learners. So he isn't saying that we shouldn't teach. He's pointing out that there is a great responsibility that comes with teaching others. And we know that we're ready to teach others when we can literally practice what we preach. Yes. I love it. Pastor Marco, he says it like this. What you write down, you own. And what you teach, you master. So we teach not only yes. by what we say, but we teach by how we live. So we must take ownership of the Word of God and then master it by living it. And then I think there's also a second part of the warning here because there is a great temptation that will come to those who teach. As the Holy Spirit grants us wisdom and insight and revelation to teach others, he also gives us great influence over those that we're teaching and who are learning from yes. us. And some of those may even be new believers. So there, we must remain humble and committed to teach only his word and not our own opinion. And I think this also applies to someone who is discipling others. As a disciple, we have a responsibility to only make disciples of Jesus and not of ourselves. In everything we do, we must always be pointing everyone to Jesus. Wow, I just love when we come together and go through the Word as a family. This really helps us grow. I hope this encourages you to do it as a family. Let's move on to verse 2. Indeed, we all have made mistakes. Mm. For if we can control our tongue, we would be perfect and control ourselves in every other way. We is the first thing James says. We, meaning himself all make mistakes. What he's saying is when you recognize you've made a mistake, now you have an opportunity to grow. As somebody that who has made many mistakes, and me too. I've had many opportunities to grow. Pastor Markle taught us in the first teaching on James 1, 1 through 4, that it's our faith that's being tested. And yesterday, Pastor Janet taught us that in James 2, 25 and 26, that Faith without works is dead. And what I have learned, the greatest way I put my faith to work is what I say, especially when I'm facing a trial of my faith. Let me give you an example of this. 1 Peter 5.8, 
The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. The roar represents the testing of our faith. And the word devour in the Hebrew means to destroy, tear apart, or to remove all of its blood. Now, we as believers know that it's the blood that is our covenant. It's the blood that sets us free. It's the blood yes. that takes our sins away. And he wants to remove it. So when the devil roars with something to get our attention, he's waiting for our first response because he knows what it says in Matthew 12, 34. For whatever is in your heart determines what you will say. And I know this is so true when I'm under pressure. So he roars. Then he listens mm. to see what the first response will be. Words of faith that we're in covenant with God and his word is in our heart or words of fear that we speak the challenge or the trial that will eventually bring us into covenant with the devil. So we have learned that if we can control our tongue under pressure, we would be perfect and we could control ourselves in every other way. Wow, that is the goal, to grow into that perfection, to allow the testing of our faith to come alive. Wow. Yes, let's move to verse 3 through 5. We can make a large horse do whatever we want by the means of a small bit in its mouth. A small rudder makes a huge trip tur ship turn whatever direction the pilot wants to go. Even though the winds are strong, the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. Yeah, so he's saying our tongue is a small thing, but it is full of power. And James is telling us here, your tongue has the power to position you and set your course. So the words we speak will either invite the Holy Spirit to lead us into the path yes. of abundant life or... yes. These words can invite demons to lead us down the path of death and destruction. So we have what we say. We really must think before we speak. And that's what James is saying. We have to be disciplined in our thoughts so we speak the word of God and those right words will set our course in the right direction. So the truth is where we are today is a product of what we've been saying. And this is exactly what you were talking about. Back up in verse 2. Let's read it again. It says, yet if we could control what we say. But that's the good news. We can mm. control what we say. With the help yeah. of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, we can use the power of our tongue to our advantage and pass the testing of our faith. Yeah, that's what he's after is our faith. And you know what, babe? Maybe as we've been sharing this, there are people that are listening and right now you're saying, I'm the one, I've made mistakes. Maybe you think that you have set your course for destruction and there's no mm. way out, but that's not true. You can change your course. James said, you said it, you are the pilot. So right now the Holy Spirit is here to give you an opportunity to turn your mistake around and begin to speak words that will lead to life and victory. You can go today from speaking the problem to speaking the promises and the victory of God. Praise God. I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to pray. Lord, I thank you that we know we've made mistakes and right now we repent. We break every word that gave us a covenant with the devil and we release the words of faith over our life. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers and you know our heart, Father God, because we want to serve you with all of our heart. So today we choose to grow in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, that's your opportunity. Let's grow together. And if you enjoyed today's video, please make a comment at the page. And make sure you share with a friend so we can all grow together. We love you. Love you, family. Day 17 is going to be an amazing day.